to weightlifting, when I'm beating you to the practice field, when I'm staying longer than you, conditioning you, when I'm seeing more film than you, uh, you know it's an open competition. And a lot of guys can't take that, and so they have this uh, fake camaraderie, like we all love each other. But we, all, we, we, we respect each other because we're all on the same journey, but everybody wants the spot. Wants that because, job. Yeah, it's because, mm -hmm. because that's what you're working for. I was just a guy to say, yo, this is what we're working for, and let's put this on the table that I, I'm here to do this. And so that became like my thing. And so when you go out here and you win it all, uh, you just was like, yo, this is, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I just think even more so through life as I mature, you know, as I've lived life, like that's really what your approach got to be if you really want something. I think that keeps you in line with yourself. I think knowing what you want gives you a system or, or, or allows you to create accountability for yourself. Right. Because, you know, I, I'm not saying I want to be the best on one day, then I say I want to be the third best on, on, on Tuesday. When you put it out there and you let it be known to your friends, to the world that, yo, this is what I'm doing, a person can then measure your daily activities and say, oh, yo, this dude is serious about his achievements because he said this is what he wants us to do. And this, and this, this, this reality that he wants to experience has a certain responsibility to it. Right. And that's kind of what happened in that situation. And you put it out there, you made it happen. You put it in the air, made it happen. Put it in the air, make it happen. You, and the last championship was 1970. You went to the White House after that. Yes. And set, you got to meet George W. Bush. Yeah. How was that experience going to the White House? Because now everybody doesn't want to talk about it. So, <laughs> so now how was that experience for you going to the White um, House? It was it, it, like anybody who's never experienced it, just to give them a, a, an experience, You, the, the White House is so secure like super secure. So there was actually more sport teams there right. from from different schools or whatever it was. And I think that I think what they do is just make like a White House day for all sports teams, okay. right? And they shuffle you in and you have all of like the secret service of people who work to the White House. They come take a picture then say hi to they out. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. commercially it looks like uh intimate and cool right. and, and you can have a picture to go, but there was like we, we did more we, we spent more time on the bus and throughout the city than we did actually it's meeting inside. him. Yeah, so then nobody really meet him per se. Oh, he okay. kind of stood amongst us and then said what he said and wrote up. And yes, photo op. So you didn't get McDonald's? He didn't serve you McDonald's? Nah, he didn't <laughs> serve <laughs> No Big Mac? Nah. Okay, so now you win the championship. Now after that, it seems like this is when the roller coaster starts coming down. Yes. Right? <laughs> College comes down now. You you, you, you got into a, a little scruffle with your um, position coach? That, so so the, the, the scuffle with the position coach happened during the season and the scuffle with the athletic director happened with, at the national championship. And the scuffle with the coach was just basically, um, for, for, for me and, you know, me how I came up and identified myself as like this, this gangster who was playing football, when the coach was talking to me uh, a bit rough, you know, I just responded a little harsher than what I should have responded. You know, that's, that's my fault to that. And uh, at the end of the year, me and the athletic director had our uh, beef about me wanting to go home to uh, see a friend's funeral, and that happened. And so the off season had come, and I wasn't uh, contributing to uh, you know the, the NCAA looking at me in a proper way, and that's when all of the uh, the, the the stuff with uh, the touring came up, the fifty cent stuff, and all of the the off the field activities had happened. So I had so much success. That and I put so much work in that you know at the end of the year when when we were done with the season and I said man I can enjoy this and, and reap some benefit just because I become popular I started to get more into that and then eventually what happened was the NCAA had basically investigated me. Started investigating so be, okay, you brought a fifty <laughs> cent. <laughs> I'm getting into that. You brought a fifty cent. Yeah. I had the pleasure of meeting you um, in Ohio a couple of times. Yes. And um, while being with G Unit on yes. tour with G Unit. And while we were on stage, be you and LeBron. Yeah. LeBron putting up the rock. You have the bulletproof vest on. Yeah. And was this something that helped ignite <laughs> the, <laughs> the beast, or was it just so? Are we gonna blame it on fifty? We gonna blame everything. We gonna blame on 50. It on 50. Yeah. <laughs> because this was during the season. No, this, this is when you was right after the season. Right after the season, going yeah. uh, yes. with Gina, right? So this, this was, was February. He came. He came to Ohio, two thousand three, like February. I, I can give the story. So, LeBron was. LeBron and Mav were in Chicago. They had watched the Pistons in a Chicago game, and they hit me. Said, "Yo, we going to Cleveland State to a Fifty Cent concert now." 50, this is like when Wankster came out. This is right. like mixtape, Wankster. Mm -hmm. This is massive 50 mm -hmm. cents. So like 
everybody know I think I'm a tough guy. I want to be, you know, I, I want to go see 50. Right. 50's like the, the father of the tough guys, right? right? And so, you know, 18, 19 years old, you're impressionable and you got hormones and, and you think you're tough, right? So we go to uh, the, the arena and the next thing you know, this is like, man, this is 50 Cent right here. This is the first time him, Le him and LeBron had met. He had Lloyd Banks, he had Young Buck. I don't think Tony Yeo was there, but I think it was that, it was that group. And then, you know, they, he, he came out, he performed that, you know, G unit. Oh, you know, that was like infectious. Right, 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 yeah, you right. know what I'm saying? And uh, from there, I was like, man, I was living like a celebrity. So right. in my head, just to experience this or to have that experience and that thing, I was like, yo, this is this is nasty. And so at that point, that's when I like kind of kept connection to then. Y'all think y'all with the Akron. And I don't know if that was in the summer. I, I get kind of the dates mixed right. up. But all that had happened. And then later on in that year, I had connected with Snoop and they was on the Rock the Mic tour. And I was just having a bunch of fun uh, right. from people who had, you know, athletics and sports, I mean, sports and entertainment, it, it meshes. Right. And so people will see, seem to uh, respect you and, and give you adulation if they've seen you play while they've been at their startup. Right. But it seems like, okay, did that and like boost the attitude as far as, you know what? I'm this guy now. 100%. Percent, right? Yes, 100%. So it, it gave you a little ba the battery boosting, right? Yeah, in the you back, right? But, but you feel like you, you feel like you, like, the, even success is a drug, man. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You you get an ego and you, you're having an experience that people just can't pay for. You know what I'm saying? And so being next to, just being next to these guys on stage or being in that environment and, you know, now you're getting different hookups from people. It, it all feeds into you feeling like you're larger than what you started. started. But, but you don't even feel like you're, mm -hmm. um, you don't feel like you're off track. You feel like you're just experiencing what you should be experiencing because you're good at what you do. Right, right. And so in my mind, I never looked at it like I'm being malicious towards the NCAA. I looked at it like I'm just going out here and enjoying myself. You know what I'm saying? And getting what belongs to me. And, and, and that's how I felt. I'm getting what belongs to me and, and I'm having experience. Like even now, like, you know, if, you know, if I was 18, 19 years old and I don't know who's popular now, like it, that would be the equivalent of what, Drake or somebody who was massive. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. Uh, if you were a young kid, it, it would be hard pressed to believe that you probably wouldn't go on stage with this person. With this person, and and then you know, even from from a from a perspective of me, when you think you're a gangster, and you know, when you when you say these words and repeat these words, you really believe you're that person. You know, well, people look at you like uh, you're an athlete. Why why act that way? Why do that? And you're you're this athlete that's a beast on great, the field. Great question. Right. So people are like, I, I wish I was in that position, and here you are being an athlete slash gangster, rapper, celebrity, and all that. Here we go, but because what you call yourself or how you feel about yourself is more in line with the rappers. So a rapper is doing nothing more but talking, and and this is rap during my generation, right? They're talking about coming out of that struggle. They're talking about coming up. They're talking about their experiences in their neighborhood. They're talking about fighting through adversity to get to where they become. College is more in line with a guy who has admirations to do something through academia. And that's a whole different set of standards and expectations in that environment. Mm. Most young kids who come from the inner city don't align with having academic expectations. Right. They more align with MTV crib era. Let me have sex with women. Let me be the center of attention. Let me be a celebrity. And so when you have this music, and you know, music is hypnotic. You know, say yeah. you can listen. You mm -hmm. can listen to music and start to, like, you know, just, just think like this. People think you're growing at 18, 19 years old. You're not growing. You're still trying to discover yourself. You know, say so. 18, 19 years old. I'm shaping myself through what I'm hearing. You know, said I'm shaping myself and how I want other people to view me because you know I want to be a gangster. So, you know, I listen to a little bit of Jay Z. I listen to a little bit of Fifty Cent. Uh, you know, take this and take some consideration. 2003, New York culture is big. You know, said mm -hmm. for for hip hop, New York drove the world with how you should feel and right. walk and talk right. and all this stuff. And anybody who says different, they lying. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so you're trying to, you know, appeal to women and you're trying to do this stuff. And so you take this stuff on, but you don't realize this is detrimental to college athletics. You don't even connect it to. You, can, you can't connect it to because you just don't even have that level of awareness. Right, right, right. And so when I look back on it, you know, you were just taking a mentality that didn't belong in college. That... Right. The, the, the average fan, like, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. And even a kid, he may not get it. He but might not get it. He, but you're still doing it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then what happens is they say, yo, you you out of line. You're out of our standard operations. And so we got to go ahead and part ways with you. But it's a learning experience. And so now, you know, I get a chance to 
you know, understanding. I think like you, you forgive yourself when you understand what you've done in the past. Right, right, right. You say, okay, I, I got an understanding on it, and I, I wasn't doing nothing to, to be reckless on purpose. You just didn't know. At that time. At the time, yeah. 